Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Plate Up. Plate Up is a rogue-like cooking game that is being released very, very soon, August 4th. If you're watching this after August 4th, welcome to the Plate Up community. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the basics of the game, uh, starting with the welcome screens, which you're looking at now, how to set up things for multiplayer, how to set up your characters, as well as going over the maps and the dishes and just the general layout of what you see on the screen. So anyway, you'll be welcomed with this first screen, which is your played up welcome screen. If you're using a keyboard, I may be, I use a keyboard to play, so I'll be referring to OPWASD. Uh, if you're using a controller, you can refer to what they say on the screen. To begin, you either press A or P to begin. And it brings you to your options. Single player is obviously a single player world. No one can join you. You can't join anybody else. Multiplayer is where you can join other people as they host the game, or you can join, they can join you if you host the game. Uh, under single player, it basically just gives you um, a profile. Now, if you just start in the game, you're not gonna have a profile. These are just some of my profiles that I've had, um, as well as other people who have played with me. So we're gonna go back to the multiplayer menu. You go to multiplayer, you're going to then have your name at the top here. This will be whatever your first profile name is. If you're following along, I'm using the WASD, the keyboard. I'm not using the mouse, but you could also use the mouse. As you see, I'm highlighting things with the mouse. But for this uh, tutorial, demo, etc., I'm just going to use the, the keyboard because that's mainly the way you play or a controller. Okay, so for multiplayer, you have your profile name and you have options. You have invite only, which means no one can join you except if you send out the invite to them. You have private, which means there's no one coming in or coming out. That's good if you have a game set up and you don't want people trying to join it. So you set it to private after you have the people in who you want. And you also have it into open, which open means anybody can join your game if they have your Steam ID or friends on Steam or way to, way to do it through, through Steam. Uh, this game also does work with Parsec, but um, once the playtest is out, which will be out August 4th, as I said, most people will be doing the native multiplayer, which is what this game supports. So now you can choose what you want here. And I'm going to go back to one option here is your main options. So you have game options at the moment. There's not a lot of options. You can have your letters inside or outside, which I'll refer to as envelopes. We'll get to that in a minute. You have your booking desk as a parcel, which we'll also get to in a minute. The booking desk is what you use to call in additional customers as the day goes on, which we'll touch on more of these once we actually get into using those things. You have graphic settings, your resolution, borderless, your window mode, I have borderless, full screen, etc. V-Sync, on off, max FPS, and then just basic settings. You can just use the default. Accessibility, there are a couple of accessibilities. So you have night darkness on and you have night darkness off. And that means the restaurant on the outside will get dark at nighttime, like surrounding the restaurant. And if you have this on, it will do that, but some people don't like having the darkness. So you can turn it off and everything will stay bright. Colorblind Assist is exactly what it says as of now. It shows letters for unclear foods. At the moment, only ice cream. That will may change as patches come out, of course. And uh, the ice cream will have different letters underneath it dictating which is which. Uh, like I said, there will be more added to it as the game goes on. So, and then of course you have your effect volume, which is just up or down. And um, yeah, so we're just gonna go back to back. Back to your main screen here. We're just gonna do a single player game. You choose a single player game. You select what profile I want. Again, I have a bunch as well as for other people who play with me. Some of those names you may recognize, Cranberry, Huffle, Vixen, etc. And you can go to create profile right from this screen. But we'll always do Ontario the King, which is how I how I do a lot of my play up videos. Okay, and we're gonna start. And now it has taken us to the main screen. This will be where you're doing most of your work. So let's go over a few things. Up here is where you select your profile. And each of these subsequent rooms down here, here, and here, you could have up to four people joining you. And if you'd have another input or someone joining you, they would spawn in here, etc. cetera. It'd look the same as this window, this little box up here. You go to here, the mirror to adjust your clothing. You hit O or P. The key, the um, other commands, or the other, excuse me, the other um, controller commands you see on the left-hand side, this is set up for keyboard only. If you'd have a controller input, it would show you the controller inputs. But for um, 
Anyway, for argument's sake, you can select through three different ones. Here you could do your colors by interacting on it, and here's where you can select a profile. If you're playing on someone who's hosting the game, you would interact with this, and then you'd set your controls to how you want them, which you can rebind these by using your mouse, clicking on it, as you can see, I'm highlighting it, and then uh, you have grab, you have act, which is your action button, you have ready, which is you'll see that when we ready up to like start the day, and then ping is the little light of the bolt of lightning that shoots out of your out of your uh, your head to kind of as a as a ping marker about where you are or where you're trying to show someone something. And standing still, uh, mine is space bar, and this is just to make yourself stand um, in a spot and rotate like on a pin. And then of course you go back. And then you have your profile to switch and then you delete as well. But since we're playing just with mine, we're gonna go like that. Okay, the next thing, I'll do things in order. Tutorial. Tutorial is a way to reset what maps you have down here. Now, if you are fresh to the game, oh yeah, also the cats are here and you can pet them. <laughs> if you are new to the game, you will not have four slots unlocked. You will have two. It's the same thing with the food dishes. You will unlock, you will have two dishes to choose from. And then your seed runs exist, your weekly and your city, you have to unlock those as well as you level up. Just keep that in mind, I am level, I'm not sure what the top level is that you need to unlock everything that's in the game currently, but you do have to level up. It's not very hard, you do a few runs, it'll be level one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. If you'd like to check out what levels you access what, check out the wiki, which I will paste a link in the description of this video. The wiki is constantly being updated by great people on the Discord servers. So uh, check back often if there's something that you're unaware of. In the tutorial, what I'm saying is that basically tutorials is what you can use, which we will demonstrate in a second once I go over everything else, how to reset the dishes that are down here and the maps that are over there. Now I can't, I can't, I can, you can see my mouse moving, but I can't click on any of these things. So it's hard to, to show it, but you can follow along. Up here is your practice map. And this is where you can use to feed the cats. And this is basically you're taking a steak out and then you're just kind of cooking it, but we don't have to go through that. This is just a fun thing. Um, this is a way to test, however, your dish to see exactly what you need. So for instance, let's just pick hot dogs. Once you unlock hot dogs, the cats will leave. You can come up here and you can see the main, the base ingredients that you start with. And you go to recipe and it tells you exactly how to make it. You cook a hot dog, place it in a bun, place it on a plate and serve it. Simple as that. And you can do that for all the dishes. This is just a fun little intro way without going into the game um, to kind of see what, what each dish is all about and what the main ingredients, how the things look. You can pick these things up. You can pick a bun up, etc. The cats are here just for fun. They don't, they don't do anything. If you don't feed them, it doesn't change anything. Okay, so setup is down here. This is complete. You always have to pick a floor plan. Now the floor plans are a bit tricky. And I will go over that in, in a different episode, probably part two of this uh, tutorial. You have multiple different map types and map styles. You have some that are this, which start, these are your city maps, Alpine, Alpine again in city. And that all dictates on what type of elements you have on the outside of your restaurant, whether it's nighttime, whether it's rain, whether it's cold, and all that affects your patience, which we will get into much later in this series of tutorials. You have a daily map and you have a weekly map, which is, these are seeded runs. A seed run basically means that you will get the same cards, which we'll get into again in a minute. Once we start up, once you load up a game, you'll get different cards on days three, six, nine, and 12 and 15, and then every three days after that. And by using a seeded run, it means you're gonna get the same cards per dish as you get the time before you ran it. Seeded runs has also been introduced where you could type in a new seed, and you type a new seed, and it gives you the seed, and the seed gives you the map. This is just a, a gen you can type in anything you want. Th there's no limitations of what you, you can just type in trial. It doesn't matter. And it'll spit out a map that goes with whatever those settings are like in, in the uh, in the database. And what Cedar Runs also do here, these are set ones that won't change one every week, one every day, just for fun ones so people can compete with each other or say, hey, look at the look at the daily map, look at the weekly map, they're great maps, let's play them together. And a seed run here again, you can type whatever you want and that seeds the cards and also the, the restaurant layout, but not the dish. The dishes are relevant to seeding. The next step I wanna to touch on up here, this is your franchise area. If you are brand new to the game, you will have nothing up here and this likely will be locked. But what this does, it allows you to have access to the franchises that you've created. As you see, I have right now I have 25 current franchises available that I could play. Some are very old, Lettuce out, the dough roll, or pirate cove gone fishing. Some are newer ones like 
All Rice for TOG, which is me, the Ontario Gardener, uh, Scrubby Fish. And these are this is just the name of the restaurant, Squeaky Bee Salads, Hot Meat and Buns. You know, you can name it whatever you want. But you do have to get a certain level to unlock these, which, again, you can check the wiki for that. And all this room does is you basically can come over here. You can view the cards, which I will get into in the next video once we open up a restaurant and we talk about what you see when you first play. But these are basically the cards that you get for a run. There's a lot of cards here. Again, the wiki has all these things listed. But for today's video, we're going to not touch on this. Down here on the left-hand side, all you gotta do is follow my play around. You have, this is where you stand to, to start the day. All the people uh, will stand here and it'll just automatically load and then load into the game. Your loading bay, there's two little trolley carts, which means you can bring two items. We will, we'll go into some of these a little bit later on because there's so many. This will look quite blank to most of you if this is your first time playing. As you play through runs and you franchise it and you get to level or to day six, nine, etc., you will get a free item at the completion of that run, which you can then use to transform into a new item, or you can use an upgrade kit to transform a regular sink into a wash basin, into a power sink, into a plant, into an auto plater, etc., etc. We'll touch on this again in a further video. These are the basics of the new game. Now, to set up a multiplayer game, you would go into here, into multiplayer, and it, it shows you the, what was selected when you initially said multiplayer. You have private, which no one can join. You can't, you can't invite, no one can join you. You have invite only, which means you can only invite people. They cannot join your room, regardless if they see you on Steam. And then open means you can invite people and they can join your game as they please, as long as, again, you have your Steam friends, because that's typically how the native multiplayer works. And what I can do here is I can come down here and I can hit invite friends, and it's gonna pull up my Steam friends list, which you guys can't see, which is done on purpose, but it gives me a list of people and I can invite anybody on my friends list to play with me. And if someone doesn't have the game and they wanna play with you, you can use Steam Remote Play. And you could also use Parsec, which is not going to be covered in, in this set of tutorials. Because there's many different ways to set that up, depending on your inputs, controllers, etc. And I'm not going to cover that uh, as of yet. But anyway, this is where you could invite someone to come play with you. They would show up here in your empty slot, which my mouse is. And then you can obviously kick people. I can't kick myself, but you can remove inputs. And this is just a way to uh, kind of fine-tune your multiplayer experience. Again, remove input is the same thing. And then your options are the same options as we saw on the main menu. And then quick game obviously quits the game and continue just, you could hit escape uh, and continue, obviously just continue back to, to where you were. So that, that's the, this is the utmost basics of, of how to start up played up. We went over the different dishes where they appear, the different maps, what the cats do, the workshop over here, the franchise room, the little test kitchen, the tutorial and your inputs. The last thing I'm going to touch on in this tutorial, and then we're going to move on to possibly talking about different maps, different map types, dish types, and getting into a game. So the last thing is your tutorial, and you just you just interact on it. I For me, it's O, and then you P to enter, or you could hit the enter button. This is your tutorial, and most people will think, wow, do I have to play this tutorial? And the answer is no, you don't. This just gives you a very, very basic understanding. If you haven't seen anybody play the game or stream the game, and you're brand new to it, this is an easy way. You pick a fish, it tells you to drop it on the safety hob. The bar fills as the fish cooks, grabbing it off the hob early will lose progress. You pick a plate up, you tap it on here, or you could do it the other way. You could take a plate like this, interact with it, pick it up, wait for this to finish cooking. You double tap it and you come over here. You interact on a customer with the O key. This is using keyboard, of course. It, they tell you what you want. And once you have it in your hand, you place it on the table using P. You can see their order above their head. Place it on their table and serve them. You'll get a heart. And in a normal game, you'll get money for this. And again, I'm hitting my L key, which is my uh, illuminate key. And then you pick the dish up. You come over here. You interact with it again to wash it. You have to hold the button down and you place it. Now here is going over sides. You can prepare sides by picking up a potato, chopping it, putting it on a hob to make french fries. Again, you pick a plate up and you pick a plate up just like that. This customer is going to come in. They're going to choose They're going to choose their meal. And you know what? I bet you they're going to pick. Let's get a fish on because we're going to wait to see what they want. They want a fish with fries. Wait for the fish to cook. Plate it with the fries or chips as they were. Place it and there you go. 
Customers won't sit at a table with something on it, meaning a dirty dish. So as long as there's a dirty dish on here with this icon, no one will sit here. So if you have people waiting outside the restaurant, they won't sit here. But as soon as you pick it up, you put it back in, and you got to clean your messes. If you don't clean messes, you get stuck on them, and they make you walk slow. So again, you interact on them. It's all clean. Let's wash another plate and place it back. Now, this is um, a lengthier tutorial. I, will not con I won't play this full out. You guys can play the rest of it if you like, but this is the basic gist of how the tutorial works. Now, the other thing that tutorial is used for is to reset the dishes as well as to reset your maps. If you guys remember early in the video, the dishes I had at the bottom of the screen, the, the hot dogs, the, you know, the steak or whatever it was, you hit escape and you go to leave tutorial it asks you if you want to quit, which you're basically going back to the lobby. You hit OK, and if you see, we have different dishes down here. So your random maps, which are down here, are all different now. The names at the bottom just describes the, where they're at. It doesn't describe the type of map in the sense of where things are located. You have a country, you have another country, you have an alpine, you have a city. And these are all I would consider medium to small maps. And of course, the dishes are different. Now we have pies, we have steak, we have pizza, and we have stir fry. You can do this tutorial to reset the dishes and to reset the maps as much as you want. You come over, you interact on it, you hit enter. Now, mind you, you don't have to do anything in the tutorial. You hit escape, you go down to leave tutorial, you go right back and watch the dishes, and the maps will be reset. Now we have burgers as an option. We have fish, we have steak, and we have stir fry. It's random what you get, so theoretically you have a chance to get the same ones, but typically you won't. And as I said in the beginning is as when you start out, you're only going to start with two different dishes. As you level up, you'll unlock burgers, you'll unlock stir fry, et cetera, et cetera, which is something to look forward to. And you don't have to complete a run. You don't have to franchise a run, which we'll get into a little bit later. You don't have to franchise a run to unlock new dishes. You just have to gain experience. Again, the maps change. Look at this. This is a much bigger map, small map. Again, this is what's considered a diner map as this is considered a diner map, which we'll get into in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. If you're brand new to the game, uh, consider leaving me a subscribe. Follow me on Twitch at The Ontario Gardener where I stream this game throughout the week. Stay tuned for part two where I'm going to go over the different dishes, the different food options, as well as some of the different map types and maybe some of the things that are in over here where my mouse is in the workshop. Thank you guys very much. Look forward to see you guys in the next tutorial. Take care now.